I'd like to give you some more examples of how to use some of these basic polynomial tricks. So the, remember these tricks, the main one was that if we have x to the power of something, we take that something, and to do the derivative, we take the something, put it in front, and then we make x to one less exponent than it was. And we just had an example here of how to deal with these. So let's look at another example. This time we have f of x equals four over x plus square root of x. Now before doing this one, I actually wanna show you something here. This one here, it helps first of all to remember, um, well this is maybe a key thing right here, is make it more calculus friendly. And this is gonna be a common theme that I'm gonna use right here, okay? So what I mean by calculus friendly is to make it usable with this polynomial trick. Okay, so the polynomial trick we were looking at before, maybe I'll put little stars by it. Ooh, there we go. So make it more calculus friendly. And this is gonna be common with a lot of really complicated looking examples. We're going to need to make it, because right now it doesn't look like it's in exponent form. Yet we have to use this property that's something to the power of something. And if I get it in this form, then I can easily do the der derivative. So that's why when I say more calculus friendly, what I mean by that is make it in exponent form. Maybe it helps to remember the rules of exponents. So just in case you forgot them, let's go over just a couple of them. I won't do them all, but uh, maybe just a few really important ones. One is that uh, if we have, let's say, a negative exponent, let's say we have x to the power of negative a, let's just say. Well, that's the same thing as saying one over x to the a. So in other words, if you see something with a negative exponent, you, it's the same thing as saying one over that thing with a positive exponent, that's the same. Now another one is if you have fractional exponents. So let's say you have, I don't know, the nth root of x, let's just say. So this could be the cube root or the square root if it's a little two here. Um, it could be the fourth root, put a little four here. But all this, this is the same as saying x to the power of one over n. So if you have a little two here, uh, well, actually, we have a 2. We normally don't write it. That's implied to be called the square root. So that would be x to the power of 1 over 2. Or if it's a cube root, if it's got a little 3 there, then it would be 1 over 3. That would be the same. And last, maybe another property that might help. Let's say we have x to the power of a. All that is to the power of b. So if we have an exponent to an exponent, okay, so we have some sort of power to the power of something else, it's the same thing as saying just x to the power of a times b. So those are just a few little rules of exponents maybe to try to remember. Maybe these are gonna come in handy. Now, let's use these properties to work with this then. Let's make this more calculus friendly. So we start off with f of x, and keep in mind I'm not yet doing the derivative. I'm not doing f primed. So I'm going to write it as more calculus friendly. Now there's a four on the top, it still stays on the top. But four over x, if you use this property right here, that's the same thing as saying four times x to the power of negative one. Right, because if I had x to the power of negative one, it'd be like, it'd be like having one over x to the one. So this is the same as this. So although this looks nice and compact, calculus wise, this is very difficult to deal with. But this one is very easy to deal with. So this is why this one now is more calculus friendly. And plus square root of x, well I implied that before, that this is like a little stealth two here. I mean it's not, it's not written, but it's implied it's a second root of x. And the nth root of x is the same thing as saying x to the power of one over n. So in this case, it'll be x to the power of one over two. Now this is more calculus friendly. It may look ugly, but it's way easy to use this calculus trick here. x to the power of n equals n x to the power of n minus one. That's your derivative here. So let's deal with that now. So that means that although I rewrote f of x, it's really important to do this properly so that your teacher or someone else can tell what you're really doing. If nothing else, it's just good practice to label what you're doing. So this is f of x. Now I'm ready to do f primed of x. Let's see, now I use this trick. Negative one is the exponent, so I bring that in front. So negative one times four gives me negative four. X to the power of, I need to do negative one minus one. 
Well, negative 1 minus 1 is negative 2 plus. Now I take this 1 half and put it in front. So 1 half times x to the power of, this time I'll actually write it all out, 1 half minus 1. How do I deal with that? Well, I should make this a common fraction. So this right here, 1 half minus 1 is the same thing as saying 1 half minus 2 over 2. I'm going to make a common denominator because 2 over 2 is the same thing as 1. Because of that, then 1 over 2 minus 2 over 2 is the same thing as saying 1 minus 2, all that over 2. And 1 minus 2 is negative 1 half. So that means then that this is the same. So f prime of x equals negative 4 x to the power of negative 2 plus 1 half x to the power of negative 1 half. Now you could say that you're done, but let's pretty it up a little bit. So let's actually move it back to the proper form just to make it a little bit nicer to look at. So the negative 4 is still sitting in front. Remember, this negative here doesn't mean it has to be a negative exponent like we had here. This is just a negative 4 as a number in front. It's only negative exponents. Those are the things that make it drop down. So this right here is the same thing as saying, uh, well, x to the power of negative 2 is like saying 1 over x to the power of positive 2. So that's the same. Plus, and let's do the same thing here. We have 1 over 2, so 1 over 2. And this x to the power of negative 1 half is like saying 1 over 2 times x to the power of 1 half. And dropping it down makes the exponent positive. I suppose I probably should have put the 1 a little bit more in the middle. But that's just a minor little detail. Finally then, just to make it even prettier, we're almost done. What I can do is I can rewrite the power of, uh, or I can rewrite x to the power of 1 half. I can use this trick up here. That x to the power of 1 half is the same thing as saying the square root of x. So see, I'm just going backwards and now rewriting it like this. So this is the equation for my derivative at any point. So remember, this, what this is asking then is if we want to know what the slope of the tangent is of this graph at any point, that's what this is. So if we ask specifically, what is it at x equals, I don't know, 12? Then you take this equation, and everywhere you saw an x, you just replace it with a 12. So it'd be negative 4 over 12 squared. Well, that'd be 144 over 1 times 2 times, uh, sorry, 1 over 2 times the square root of uh, 12, which wouldn't work out all that nicely. But in any case, we could totally do it. So let's look at another example. So what if we have it like this? You might think, oh God, what do I do? Maybe I'll make this one in different colors here. Well, it helps to first rewrite y again. Let's make it more calculus friendly. This 2x plus 7 over x squared, it turns out if you know your calculus tricks, you could use what we call the quotient rule because you have something with x's divided by something with x's. You could. Quotient rule would totally work. But I want to show you how to simplify this thing first. If you can simplify, I think you should, because it makes things easier. Oddly enough, that's why it's simplified, right? It's simpler. So let's take a look. We can write 2x plus 7 over x squared is the same thing as saying 2x over x squared plus 7 over x squared. So it's like uh, now I can write them as two separate fractions, but with the same common denominator. That's the same. That means then, remember, I'm still not working with the derivative. I'm not doing y primed yet. I'm just doing y. I'm making this more calculus friendly. Well, this x and this x squared right here, well, they'll cancel each other out. So I'll just have 2 over x. I'll say plus 7 over x squared. Well, that's already a little bit simpler. But now I can rewrite it and, again, make it more calculus friendly. So 2 over x is the same thing as 2 times x to the power of negative 1 because right, it's on the bottom and it's to the power of 1. And this plus 7 over x squared, it's the same thing as saying plus 7 times x to the power of, and try to think what it should be. Hopefully you got negative 2. So now this is more calculus friendly, so now I'm finally ready to find my derivative. And again I use my trick, negative 1 times 2 is going to be negative 2 times x to the power of, and this is going to be negative 2 because it's 1 less. And then let's see, negative 2 times 7 is negative 14 times x to the power of, and then do 1 less, so minus 3. 
Well, then I'm done. I just can now pretty it up. So again, negative 2 stays on the top. x to the power of negative 2 is the same as x over, well, sorry, over x squared. And I have a minus 14 hanging out in the front. Divide that by x to the power of 3. That's the same as x to the power of negative 3. So there is my answer. So that's the answer for that uh, derivative there. And I think uh, finally, yeah, let's do one more. I think I had one more that I prepared here. So find the equation for the derivative of this mess at any point. So we don't want it at a specific point, we want it at every point. Well, same idea here. We need to make this more calculus friendly first, because right now it looks really ugly. So I'm still going to work with f of x. Well, let's see. First, I can say a cube root is the same thing as saying, remember this uh, trick right back here that I showed you, a cube root here, like nth root, same thing as this to the power of 1 over n. And I'm also going to use this rule right here. So let's see here. So I've got this right here. Cube root is the same thing as saying x squared, because remember, it's an x squared that's sitting in there x squared to the power of 1 over 3. Are you following that, I hope? This, all I've done is just dealt with a cube root. So I've just written it like this. But now I can use that other rule that a power to the power of something else is the same thing as just multiplying them. So 2 times 1 over 3 is just 2 over 3. So it's 2 divided by x to the power of 2 over 3. This is now more calculus friendly. Uh, actually, not even quite. We can still work on it one more step. Because this is on the bottom, I can say, I can rewrite it as 2 times x to the power of negative 2 thirds. Because I can take something that's on the bottom and make it on the top. So now this is fully calculus friendly. This is ready to be figured out. So my derivative at any point is going to be, well, let's use this trick again. Now this may look tougher, but we can still deal with it. Negative 2 thirds comes down in front. So that means negative 2 thirds times 2 is just going to be, well, the 2 are on the top here. So 2 times negative 2 gives you negative 4 over 3 times x to the power of negative 2 thirds minus 1. Now, 1 is the same thing as minus 3 thirds. I'm just going to do it sort of in more, the, uh, sorry, in less steps here. I could have said negative 2 thirds minus 1. And then I would have said, oh, I need a common denominator. So 1 is the same thing as 3 over 3. The reason I do this is because now I can rewrite f prime of x. Well, it's still negative 4 thirds x. And now this negative 2 thirds minus 3 thirds is going to be negative 5 thirds. And if I really wanted to, then I could fix it up a bit. So that's the same thing as saying negative 4 over 3 times x to the power of 5 thirds. That's the same. Oops, my third uh, looked pretty gross there. I just got to fix it up. So there we go. And if I really wanted to, I could actually rewrite it as this. It turns out that's the same thing. If I say, let's see here, I could say the cube root of x to the power of 5. That's also the same thing. It's all a matter of deciding when you actually want to stop, right? Because we could say that this is the answer, but this is also the answer. This is also the answer. They're all correct. All three of these are the same. Um, maybe I'll just leave it like this. This is the more common one, at least that teachers want you to do. Although there's nothing wrong with just fixing it up a little bit. So I hope that this shows, even though we had some really gross examples, hopefully it shows that the idea is fairly straightforward that if you want to take a derivative and you have a polynomial or something with negative exponents or fractional exponents, just use these tricks here uh, to do your derivatives. The most important one by far is actually this one right here. All right, this is really the key to doing them all, I think. It's just that trick right there. So that's why it's a basic trick, right? It's used a lot, and we can use these to solve all sorts of questions.